Hey Terrarians, how's it going? My name is Pixelated Fireball, and welcome back to the Calamity Mod. So today we're gonna be doing a very, very colorful boss fight. The Empress of Light is on the menu for today. A fight that I have only done probably, uh, I could probably count on one hand how many times I've actually fought her. And I don't remember her being excruciatingly challenging, but I know that the Calamity Mod likes to spice things up a bit with some of the original bosses, as I learned the hard way with the Golem. So, you know, I don't know if this is gonna be an easy fight or not. And then we're gonna take down the Ravager, the good old Golem refight. I don't remember him being anything other than a pushover in all difficulties. So, you know, that, that could be good. That's basically how the videos are gonna be going now. We're gonna be getting on, killing some bosses, and moving on. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna have any more ore or anything to farm between now and then, because we do need to deal with the Lunatic Cultist here at some point soon, which it's kind of a really weird type of progression here. We defeat the Lunatic Cultist and then get the tower weapons and then fight the Astrum Deus and Astra Geldon before the Moon Lord. I'm not really sure how this whole little bit here is gonna go but we're gonna find out. Also, fun fact, I believe this episode makes the Calamity Mod Let's Play the longest Let's Play I have ever done. So, huzzah, congratulations, good job to me, I suppose. I found a mod with 50,000 bosses, so uh, yeah, of course it's gonna take forever, but that's all right. We're having a great time, kind of, sort of. You know, it's, it's fun, you know, being a boss fight simulator right now. That's all it really is anymore. I mean, there's some exploration coming soon, but I don't know how much. But anyways, getting out of the rambling and into the business at hand today, we have got another trophy to throw down. It is time to put in the Plague Ringer Goliath trophy all the way down here. We got to go pretty far. Like I said a while back, uh, a, a particular stage of this game's got a lot more bosses in it than the other ones. I don't know if you could tell which one that might be. But anyways, now we got that done. There's the trophy. I'm guessing that's like a stinger of some sorts or some such. I don't really know, to tell you the truth. But now there's not really anything else left to discuss. So we're gonna head over. I've actually got a few prismatic lace wings that I'm gonna convert into those uh, primrose something or others. I know they're in here somewhere. Yeah, we're gonna craft a few of these. Prismatic primrose. That's the Fargo's item that'll let me uh, summon her uh, many few good couple times here. And we gotta make it nighttime because I'm definitely not gonna do that in the daytime. I have absolutely negative interest in that right now. So we'll just um, clean up all the bits and pieces of things laying around over here. I had to do a little bit of farming over here to actually get the, uh, the lace wings to spawn in, of course, because there's no way for me to just get them artificially. I had to go over here and get them the hard way, so gotta come over here and, uh, you know, cancel a couple people's life subscriptions, if you know what I mean. But anyways, let's make it nighttime. It's gotta be 7.30, and let's call her forth and see how this goes. Hopefully it goes really well, and it's just really easy. There she is. All right, we're gonna start spamming here. Let's just start spraying and praying. We're gonna use a syringe, oh my God. So I can already tell it seems like she's a little bit faster than she normally is. I'm not really sure if she does a charge. Um, okay, extra projectiles from that. I don't remember that being a thing that she did. I thought that it was just a charge, but I could be wrong. Like I said, I don't really remember. Ah, God, okay, so the trail also does damage. I know this now. That's a shame, I almost had my uh, adrenaline built up as well. My God, she is like taking no damage at all whatsoever. She refuses to take damage. She says no. Oh God, okay. So yeah, those, those projectiles coming out from her are kind of frustrating. Oh God, here's this stuff again. She's drawing rainbow lines. I need to like prepare to move before she even does the charge. I just cannot stand still here for this fight. That's that's how it's gotta be. Come on, let me get that adrenaline. Let me get that adrenaline. I'm not even too far away from her. It's just that she is moving so quick, I can't catch up with her. Oh God, here we go. This is where we lose the adrenaline. All right, I'm using it, I'm using it. Come on, I just gotta hit her. Just gotta hit her a bunch. Make the boss be dead. Oh God. Yeah, get away. I, I don't think that actually helped at all, but we did it anyway. Why don't we try Malachite here, see if that works at all. It attacks pretty fast. Don't really know if I could say that it's really helping a whole lot, but I mean, it doesn't do a pile of damage. Oh, well, she's taking some damage, so you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's probably a good thing. I mean, obviously if I was doing my stealth strike, she'd be taking a lot more damage. This is doing nothing to her. It is like a wet noodle. There we go, I'm gonna use Adrenaline. Come on, hit her. I am missing 100% of the attacks every time I use my adrenaline with her. Oh my god. I don't think I'd be able to survive just using stealth strikes for this boss fight. I don't think it's possible. I'm starting to think that as we progress further along here, it's just, it's impossible to just fight a boss exclusively with stealth strikes. There's no way to do it. It'll take forever. I will die long before they do. Ow, I almost had it. Ah, oh God, it was so close. I was, I hit the button a millisecond after. There we go, come on, I got them both. I got them both at the same time, come on, hit her. Hit her with something, my God, when I bust this adrenaline out, hit her. Just a little bit, oh God, what? 
What is this? What is going on right now? Okay, I don't like that at all. Not a fan. Oh god, I'm gonna I'm gonna get screwed up here just because of all these lines. I don't like lines. It's almost as bad as death lasers. When the lines fill up half my screen, it's almost as bad as death lasers doing it. Oh god, come on. I feel like an Oblivion NPC right now. It's literally me. Me fighting a boss, my dialogue that I edit out is an Oblivion NPC. This is the part where you fall down and bleed to death. Why won't you die? Never should have come here. There we go. She's been defeated. Oh my god, that was, um... Well, that was something. I mean, I expected it to be a little bit on the challenging side, but God. That's okay, though. So we got the Terra Prisma. That's interesting. So I guess you don't actually have to fight her in the daytime to get this, which is uh, great. Elemental Axe. That is a late game item right there. Cool for summoners, though. Uh, and the Even Tide. Very neat. Very cool. Saurian Insignia. Doesn't really look like anything has changed there. I got the wings, though. These are pretty good. I remember them. Lots and lots of flight. Oh, I can make... I can make the trophy with the wings, so I don't need to fight her again. Is there an- uh, listen, is there an item that comes from her that I need? If I- if I- there's a rainbow cursor, that's cool, but I don't really care. I don't see a rogue item. I- I don't see it. Okay. I think that means we can do it again. I'm able to go back. I'm so happy right now that I can do this. Not only do I not have to fight her again, but I also can just go right down. We can throw this right on right now. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, so we have the lore. We've got this. I can get rid of the Plague Ringer summon right there. I forgot to do that. Get rid of all that business there. Oh, no, wait. I did it backwards. You use it to make the wings. Ah, that was the oopsie that I did. So I guess I might have to fight her again. But the good news is, is that I don't have to do it right now, which is so exciting. So never mind. Let's go down here. We'll throw the Empress of Lights trophy down. She's got the very special rainbow box down here. Get rid of you. I was so caught up in my excitement that I get to put these up together again that uh, I just... Just forgot how the game worked for a second. Which is totally a very common thing that happens all the time. But anyways, let's do the Empress of Light lore and see what Yarim has to say. Though her title is lofty, she is more an emissary for the powers beyond and forces of nature. In broad daylight, she can channel the primordial light itself making her nigh untouchable. Thankfully, left with only starlight to wield, she falls like any other graceless despot. Her penchant for leeching the strength of other great beings is uniquely deplorable. It made her sickeningly obedient, dependent but willingly so, as they enable her to slake her base thirst. I had designed to slay her myself for her treachery, but she was an, a notoriously evasive mark. Well, yeah, I know, I get it. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta kill the butterfly. But uh, basically, what are you saying? She's a light vampire? She's just, she feeds off of the light and the, uh, the energy of others. Makes her sound a lot more insidious than she really is. All right, well, with that done, there's not really anything I need from her. We can just move straight on to the Ravager now, who is the next one on the list. I've got the Death Whistle already. That's one of those uh, things that I think if you it exists in real life, and if you blow into it, it sounds like somebody's screaming. Pretty sure it's an Aztec thing. I'm not entirely sure. It's freaky, though. But anyways, um, right here ought to be good. Uh, I think this will be okay. This should be enough space. I mean, you move a lot during his fight, so I might end up going out of bounds. I might need a larger arena. I actually might go over here and deal with him in the uh, snow slash astral area, because it doesn't specify a biome, and it does not specify time of day. So... Big arena over here, probably the best place to do this in. I would like to do that. So now we've got this, we're ready to go. I don't know, I'm sure the Ravager's got some stuff for me, so I might have to fight him a couple of times. And by that I mean I may have to kill him once and then go to the Operator and buy the treasure bags, but you know, it's all the same thing, sort of, kind of, whatever. Anyways, let's call him forth. There's the scream. Okay, so you've got this going on here. Yeah, okay, so you're still the Golem refight that I remember. Kind of, sort of. Still love your theme, though. It's hardcore. Um, I'm gonna assume that this is gonna get more intense as time goes by. Probably. Like, this can't be it, right? I'm sure there's more to it than this. Oh god, what is going on? Like, there's a million different backgrounds over here. Alright, there we go. We got the adrenaline. We're gonna chew through them all right now, probably. Kind of, right? I guess, maybe. Oh god. Ouch. I hit the giant rock. Oh god, what happened? Oh god, what is going on right now? What, 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 what? Okay, so now we can fly. He's a golem that can fly. Oh god, this guy's head is just... He's much worse than Golem, though. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. So things definitely popped off pretty fast there. That got pretty intense. My god. Alright, so we'll go back. We'll try that again. I don't know what's up with all that. I don't know. He's, like, incredibly easy at the beginning, and then he just gets absolutely miserable at the end. Alright, so it's looking like the uh, System Bane is actually working out pretty good against this guy. I just gotta stay alive long enough for it to kill him. Oh my god. 
It's doing good, good AOE damage, but I am just not capable of avoiding slow moving projectiles, which to my credit, these aren't very slow moving. And he definitely is moving a lot faster than I ever remember him going. I'm getting there though. I just got to keep him down here in the circle. I got to keep him in the circle and then we'll be good. Ouch. And I got to not hit the giant stationary rocks. Oh God. Okay. He's done. He just got to come over here one more time. There we go. Never mind. He just died on his own. Okay. Good to go. Uh, gotcha. System Bane, very effective against Ravager. A glimpse into what could have been. Oh, is this going to be the, uh, a resprite again? Or what could have been a resprite for this guy? Okay, cool. Um, and the treasure bag, which has all, would you look at that, all kinds of stuff. So I get Necrostone. Kind of cool, I suppose. Stone pile. Oh, I can wear rocks on my head. <laughs> oh my God. That's perfect. Ravager claws. Oh, it's a, uh, a hook. Would you look at that? Interesting. So I have a much better hook now. Well, I don't know if it's better. It's got really, really good reach, better velocity, better pull velocity. But, you know, comparing that to just teleport. I don't know. I don't really use it that much anyway. We've got a skull cluster. Two skulls pop out of the whole pile with glowing eyes. A bunch of miniature necrotic flesh golem. Oh, that's cool looking. I don't know. I think I like giant toxic frog, though. Oh, we got increased duration of rage mode. Sign me up. There we go. The blood pack. This thing, mm, I remember being pretty good. Doubles max HP, allows you to be critically hit 25% of the time. So I can have more health, but I get hit harder. Healing potions heal 50% more. After a critical hit, I don't know if that means if I get hit critically or if I inflict a crit that I get buffed. So I'm gonna assume it's if I inflict a crit. We got a whole bunch of weapons here. I got the Cranium Smasher. It's a rogue item. Discs that roll on the ground occasionally launches an explosive disc. Stealth strikes launch a disc that can pierce several enemies. Okay. Interesting. Got a fleshy geode as well, which, yes, gives us a little bit of everything there. That's good. A spike crag staff, hemat hematesis, hematesis, ultimus cleaver. Okay. Lots of good stuff there. Um, is there another rogue weapon, or is this the only one? Uh, the flesh totem is in there. It's another thing I have to craft. Do I want the core of the blood god at any point? Don't really know if I do, but it is there nonetheless. Ravager Mask, there's the lore, the trophy of course we want. There's the Blood Flare core, which looks like it got a little bit of a resprite. Lose up to half your defense that are taken damage. Lost defense regens over time, gain one health for every one defense gained as it regenerates. That's kind of interesting. A lot of defensive accessories that I could throw on here if I really wanted to stack all that stuff up. I don't know. I don't see any other rogue weapons though. Oh, there's one right there. Corpus of Vert. A Vertor. Worn down over time, grant life still based on damage dealt, lower HP the more damage the weapon does, and heals the player on enemy hits. Stealth strikes through a single rainbow outline dagger. The dagger boosts damage and life regen of all members of your team, and there's a small chance it will cut your health in half instead. Boy, that just sounds so good. Mmm. Sign me up. I'll take all that. You know I will anyway, though. I'm definitely going to take all that for sure. And let's go throw down the relic. There we go. Look at that. You can barely even see it with the background there. That's kind of cool, though. I like it. So now... We can read the lore. What does the lore say about the Ravager? A sickening flesh golem built for the sole purpose of savage, relentless destruction. The monstrosity was a desperate bid to turn the tides against my god-seeking armies. I could scarcely believe it myself, but it was born of a ritual of great sacrifice, performed in ardent faith. The ritual condemned and fused the bodies and souls of their fallen allies into this hideous thing. When the warlocks pledged their very lives to it as an offering, it awoke and swiftly slew them. Now caked in fresh blood and hungered for more, and set off on an aimless rampage. I suppose in its brutality serves as a reminder to be careful what you believe. So they created a monster to fight Yarim, and it backfired. Big surprise, seems to do that a lot these days. Let's make it daytime here. Okay, so the Corpus of Verder, it's just a slow spinning murder knife, huh? And there is the glowing rainbow one that goes very fast. Okay, well, I mean, that's interesting, I suppose. I guess a couple of new weapons are always an exciting thing. So those two have been defeated relatively quickly. Now I gotta do the lunatic cultist and farm all that stuff up. And then I can move on with the remainder of the astral infection stuff. And we can take down the Moon Lord. And we're on the final third of this adventure here which just is even more bosses to kill. Even more bosses, even more weapons, even more ore, even more armor sets. That's gonna be all kinds of fun, I'm sure. Our power level surges ever higher. Well, that being done, I think I'm gonna call it an episode here, guys. So, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking me out. I really appreciate it. And as always, whatever it is, wherever you are, day or night, hope you have a good one of those. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs>
Pet Sewers. <laughs>